I'm Bob Romero, and this is the Road to the King Bowl. I'll look back at the season that has carried the West Valley Rams to the state AA championship game. It's a season that started here on this very field during the hot days of August with grueling two-a-day workouts, followed by a regular season record of 7-2, and, and then four consecutive playoff victories, earning West Valley a shot at Burlington Edison for the state AA championship. We'll begin our program with a look back at the regular season. for the touchdown and a 7-0 advantage. It would turn out to be one of those nights for the Rams. Even when they managed to make things happen, like this interception by Jim Mendez, it would be followed by a turnover by West Valley, setting up Hanford points. Um, we weren't fundamentally sound. Our defensive line was uh, doing things that, you know, they weren't taught to them, and just everybody was just off a little bit and it just threw the whole team off. Hanford, the team that ended the Rams season the year before in the playoffs, would deal the Rams another stunning defeat, 20-18, as West Valley would struggle early, losing a one-point game three weeks later at Eastmont. The team that coaches predicted would be the juggernaut of the league was 3-2. The biggest thing we wanted to do was have a chance to get back in the playoffs, and we knew that we'd have to win the rest of our games to ensure that. So. We were a little bit frustrated, but at the same time, it made us work more, and we realized what we had to do. And I think I think it's the best thing that could happen to us, seeing how far we've got, because everybody realized that we were not the invincible team, and and that we could make mistakes. And so, you know, we really had to work, and uh, the intensity picked up in the following weeks. In week six, the offensive line came together. It couldn't have happened at a more crucial time. Mike Kerr followed his blockers brilliantly to get into the end zone against Sela in a battle that would ultimately decide the league's third and final playoff berth. Sela was a turning point. We went in there knowing that we had to win for the third playoff berth, or we, were almost, we would probably be out of it. So it was a must win, and we went in there, just fired up. We hit really hard. We just moved the ball really well. We, everybody had our blocking assignments down well and we just blew them off physically, off the field. The intensity level came up because we realized that after we lost to Hanford, we'd have to win them almost all the way out to get into the playoffs and have a shot at the kingdom. But the Vikings had conquest on their minds. A field goal and second quarter touchdown gave Sela the lead at the half, 10 to seven. But the second half would belong to Mike Kerr and his band of battering Rams. They blew holes through the Sela defense that carried West Valley to a 27-17 win. All season, you know, we knew we could pull together as a team, you know, and uh, I think Sela, we believe, did pull together as a team in the second half especially. You know, we jailed, I guess you could say, and we really came together in the second half. The Rams didn't know it at the time, but the victory over the Vikings was the start of an eight-game winning streak. West Valley would follow the Viking victory by belting the Bulldogs of Ellensburg 36-6, and again, Kerr would have a big night. But Kerr wasn't the only weapon in the Rams' explosive arsenal. Quarterback J.D. Optigar befuddled the Bulldogs' secondary with strikes like this to Matt Huff. After disposing of Sunnyside, the Rams wrapped up their regular season against winless Grandview, and the Greyhounds couldn't run with Mike Kerr. In less than two quarters, Kerr ran for 153 yards and a pair of touchdowns as he went over the 1,000-yard rushing mark for the season. At the beginning of the year, I kind of put a little personal goal for myself to get 1,000 yards, and uh, it's kind of a, a goal that I wouldn't achieve on my own, you know, but uh, I couldn't do it without the help of the guys, you know. The offensive line helped me tremendously, and our fullbacks did a heck of a job, and it's just as much as theirs as it is mine. In this game, the Ram defense also showed his fans what was to come in the playoffs ahead as hard-hitting forced turnovers, and West Valley was in excellent form heading into the playoffs. 
West Valley would dispose of Grandview, finish third in the league, and move on to meet another team of Greyhounds. The other Greyhounds came from the Frontier League, and it was a team that stood between West Valley and some sweet revenge. We'll move on to the playoffs next. Well, Christmas time is... That squelching the scoring opportunity with a leaping interception in the end zone. To the delight of the faithful Fanatics, Optigar's aerial attempts met with more success. He would drop back and fire a ball that would settle into the sure hands of Matt Huff for a 7-0 lead. The Greyhounds would come back and answer with a touchdown pass of their own. Despite the fact the ball was tipped, it would go to the tight end for a touchdown. But it would be the last touchdown the Rams would allow over the next 10 quarters. West Valley defused the Greyhounds' vaunted beer. Troy Morrow's takeaway from Dan Parkman would set up the game-winning touchdown. A strike from Optigar to a receiver that he didn't use very frequently would be the difference in this one. But nonetheless, it was a play that got the job done as people were looking for someone else. We just have our design plays, and normally the, it goes to the wideouts, and I stay in and block. And once in a while I get called and it's usually pretty open because the defense doesn't key on me as much. With a 14-7 lead, West Valley in the fourth quarter would go to a little razzle battle. Mike Kerr with the option pass caught by John Newman inside the one-yard line. The play would set up a Kerr touchdown run of one yard and West Valley was in front 21-7. A lead that they would hang on and protect. But first it would take another fine defensive play, this one coming up by Newman that would earn West Valley a rematch against Hanford. With Kerr sidelined with an ankle sprain, Kip Boy moved to tailback and responded with 97 yards rushing and four touchdowns against Hanford. For the second straight week, Troy Morrow would recover a fumble in the third quarter that would set up a crucial touchdown. But the power was quite a contrast to the acrobatic antics of the Ram receivers who put on a very impressive show. I just think that as the season went along, we got more comfortable catching the ball. We caught the ball better, and JD's been putting the ball right in the money. And it's just, you know, as the season goes on, we're more comfortable out there, and we get a few more games under our belt, and we're just, we are really playing well. Newman wasn't the only amazing aerial snaring acrobat. Matt Hopp matched his lunging grab with one of his own. We've been keying the run a lot because we've been able to run the ball effectively this year. And we just feel that we have to throw the ball to open up the running game and, and that'll open up the passing game still more. And so we just really concentrate on them trying to catch the ball and that's what we've been doing this. Newman and Huff put the icing on a 38-3 West Valley win, teaming up for a touchdown on the option play. The Rams had a measure of revenge with a chance to double their pleasure. And that would come the next week when Eastmont, the only other team to beat West Valley, would clash with the Rams at Zeppel Stadium. The defense would lead the Rams' atonement for an earlier 21-20 loss by forcing a total of five turnovers in this one. Again, Troy Morrow would come up with a big play. His fumble recovery that was after the big hit by Shane Wells would set up a crucial third quarter touchdown. And the ball would get into the end zone for West Valley in a way that was becoming familiar in the playoffs through the air. Optigar with a perfect strike to John Newman for six. The passing game also put the final points on the board. Optigar to Matt Huff for six points and West Valley was on top 16 to nothing. The Rams' brilliant defense would protect that lead. Sophomore linebacker Kyle Foy led the way with a pair of interceptions. It was just really exciting having a second chance to beat a team that beat you earlier in the season. Um, I know the defense was really excited to play them again. It was just a great feeling, I guess, to intercept the ball like that. Hanford, we've always been jinxed by them. and. We just wanted to, we just wanted a piece of them. They humiliated us all you know my sophomore, my junior year, and they won us the first part of the season and that was our chance to get back at 
at them one more time than we did. Eastmont, we've never won a game against Eastmont until this year. And after we lost that game, it was a real downer. And, you know, we weren't even, after we lost that game, we weren't even looking, you know, towards the playoffs. We were really down. And to get another shot at them really meant a lot. That was everything, you know, to come back and really be able to take the Mid Valley title by avenging those uh, two losses and beating Hanford and then beating Eastmont. And then everything, everything from there on out is just, you know, another feather in the cap. It was the defense that put the feathers in the cap against Eastmont, stopping Eastmont's big breakaway fullback Jerry Keating, who was swarmed under all night, as the Rams executed the game plan of defensive coordinator Bob Altshuler to near perfection for the third straight week. I've worked with, you know, now three defensive coaches, and I've been across the line, across the field from a lot of defensive coaches, and I feel that he really has a knack for the game on field. He really has an anticipation of what plays are going to run and, and then what type of uh, defense that he should do to uh, stop their running attack or their passing attack, and he's very confident. Thanks to Alt Schuler's defense, the Ram revenge was complete. It was on to the quarterfinals against the foe the Rams hadn't seen. It turned out to be an opponent that West Valley and nearly 5,000 Zeppel Stadium fans would have trouble seeing when the teams did meet on the field. Slick ball handling quarterback Mark Tennyson led Cedro Woolley through the Ram defense with little resistance with his great faking. It was Cedro Woolley marching down the field toward a first possession touchdown. And they would get that with a little more deception as the ball goes up the middle for a 7-0 lead. But the Rams would also come back. With Kerr still hobbled, Kip Foy blasted through the defense for 127 yards total and five touchdowns on the day. It's not really too much difference. That we're carrying the ball a lot more. And so instead of doing a blocking and running, fullback you're mostly blocking all the time. And just you have a couple more steps to get to go and you get find your hole too. Indeed, he did that against the Cubs, who had trouble all day trying to stop the 220-pound fullback turn tailback. But on the other hand, the Rams couldn't stop Cedro Woolley either. With Tennyson's great ball handling, he managed to get into the end zone for a 13-point lead early in the second half. But West Valley would come back, and strangely enough, it would come down to the kicking game. Huff's extra point missed that would have given West Valley a one-point lead with less than a minute to play. But a last-second field goal, no time on the clock, was also wide, and this game would go to overtime. In overtime, fourth and two, and Doug Peterson makes the play of the game. I couldn't believe they made that call, but that was the, about the easiest thing for me to stop in that position was that the quick pitch right up to the guy because on that defense, I just go straight to the near back and hit him and, and see what happens from there. And he got the ball and I was just right there. Three plays later, Foy would bowl over from three yards out and the Rams were king bowl bound as a celebration began. Of course, both teams want this very badly, the Rams and Burlington Edison. How does that battle shape up? We'll find out from the Ram in charge and also see what this trip means to the West Valley player. Experience will help in preparing this team. I think the biggest thing is once you go to the King Bowl, and experience that that situation what it does it makes you want to go back even worse and uh, and we're happy to be in this situation and, and there's a lot of things that uh, that we do to prepare the kids to play but those are secrets and I won't really give those out it's no secret though that Ortoff took his team indoors this week practicing at West Valley Junior High in the gym to get ready for the King Bowl Ortoff says the only way that his players will be ready for the 70 degree heat in the kingdom as if they spend the week practicing inside. That way, their bodies will have time to adjust to the warmer temperatures. It's also no secret what Ortop believes it will take to beat Burlington Edison for the AA title. It's going to take the same type of intensity that we've had in the last four playoff games, um, the never, never die attitude and the, the willing to uh, sacrifice to, uh, to win the game. 
uh, that's both mentally and physically. West Valley and Burlington Edison have met one common opponent this season, Cedro Woolley, a team that the Rams couldn't stop defensively until the game was on the line in overtime, a contest that concluded with West Valley on top, 39 to 33. Burlington Edison, on the other hand, downed Cedro Woolley 34 to 14 earlier this year, and those 14 points were the most allowed by Burlington Edison in a game all year long. The Tigers' defense has recorded three shutouts and has allowed a touchdown or less in nine of its 11 games. But the offense is not very potent, and Ortop thinks his team can score against them. They're very conservative on offense. Their defense is their key to their success this season, and so it's going to be really... Uh, I would say that we're the underdogs, and they have the they have the um, the, the knowledge and the experience of being there before. That's going to maybe give them a little edge. Feel confident your offense can move the ball against? <clears throat> I think it's I think it's one of those situations that we're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more to loosen them up. They have a very outstanding defensive line, a nose guard that started for three years for them. It's been a playoff experience. They have a very good caliber outside linebackers and inside linebackers. If I could see one weak spot, I would say it would be their defensive cornerbacks. And, and by no means are they weak. They're weak compared to the other players on the team. The head coaching matchup is an interesting one. Kortoff is a fine young coach whose teams have won nearly 80% of the time, and they rarely miss the playoffs. He calls the offensive plays and has a tendency to pull out a little razzle-dazzle and be more wide open at times to keep the defenses honest and to help his offense move down the field. The Tigers, on the other hand, are directed by Glenn Rickard, the winningest active coach in the state. Compared to Ortoff, he is much more conservative. His emphasis is on defense, and it's a philosophy that for him has been very effective. Ortoff says that he's looking forward to matching O's and X's with Rickert, and he considers it to be an extra personal challenge for him as he heads into King Bowl 10 with the West Valley Rams. Well, it's a challenge for me personally, you know, as a coach, because we get to, I get to go head to head with him. And it's kind of like a little chess game between the coaches, and I'm looking forward to it. I think that uh, the way the bracket has been set up, and where they had to uh, play inside in the Tacoma Dome a week ago, gives them a little advantage of going through that atmosphere one time, and, and we didn't ever have that chance or that opportunity. So I feel that they have the advantage there. Your expectations of the game? Well, the, the biggest thing I want to do is, is just to go over and play well and represent our community, Yakima and uh, show everybody that we can get, we can do our best and give it our all. And I think if that happens, then we'll come back with that big trophy. You can bet that earlier Ram postgame celebrations like this one will pale in comparison if West Valley is victorious tomorrow. For the players, it's something they've been thinking about for a long time. It's been a dream for, for a long time. Um, I've wanted to play there. We've all thought we could make it when you're like ninth grade, we thought, well, we'll be up there, we can make it. And it came through, and we just wanted it from within. It's not, no one really asked, you know, pushed it on us. It's, we really want it bad. Everybody dreams about it. When, uh, when you play football, everybody dreams about going to the playoffs, the state championship. And uh, I, I was pretty positive we was going to make it. That means a lot to me because I've never played that much and this is my first year of really starting and you know I'm really enjoying it and it's great to be able to have that opportunity. Well ever since seventh grade we've had a dream to go to the King Bowl and play for the championship and we knew we had the talent to do it. It was just a matter of doing it and just to have the opportunity is a great feeling. It hasn't really hit me yet, you know. It doesn't come much in a lifetime, you know, but uh, I'm sure we'll take full advantage of it. When I was in junior high and younger, you know, you always thought of having a state championship and, and we always, you know, thought we had the makings of doing it and um, last year we had a shot, we were torn down a little bit and losing into the, in the first playoff round and this year we had another chance and we knew we just had to go for it all and we had the great coaches and, and the great ability and we just were able to take advantage of it. It means a lot. And we've been, ever since the first practice, that's been our number one goal is to make it to the Kingdom. And we've all pulled together and worked really well together. And that's our, that's our number one goal to win the state championship. I've never been in a game this big before. It's once in a lifetime and everything. We've got to make the most of it. It's just going to be a great opportunity and something to remember for the rest of our lives. Going to the Kingdom is just a dream come true. At the beginning of the season, I didn't really think about it too much. I, it was just such a far off dream. but. 
now you know we're so close and it's just it's just great it's it's a dream come true it definitely is it's a dream that becomes reality in 22 hours as the Rams will move on to the Kingdome field to meet Burlington Edison for the title.